everybody, it's Jeremy. And Jay. But what are you doing? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I'm Jay. I didn't <laughs> Evil, yes, we are plotting. Welcome back to Final Fantasy IX, everybody. Yeah. And play some, play some FF9. I got a blood sword. A blood sword. Blood feud. Uh, whatever, whatever I think of that game, Borderlands Three, um, and the different Three. times and different levels of fun that we have through there. There are specific bits and pieces that I will remember forever. And and screaming blood feud is one of them. Which is so weird. Of all the things to stick with you, right? Yep. Why yep. that one? A random inane fucking guy screaming blood, blood feud. feud. He didn't really steal the show, though. Let's play some FF9. I have, I have a feeling, by the way, that it's going to be a very chat-heavy night. Sorry, Jay. Oh, I'm in a very talkative mood, ain't so... Ain't gonna hurt my feelings. I'll try to avoid spoilers on anything, obviously, but uh, yeah. we might we might talk about more stuff. Um, or we might not, because I might just get uh, super involved in what's going on in the game. So we did all of the stuff in Trino, for the most part. Um, all of the optional stuff. All the, yeah, all that we can do. Yeah. I mean, we could play some more cards. I mean, we're definitely gonna need it for that part in the game when the card game is mandatory <laughs> honestly i think us just knowing exactly how the game works is going to do us better than having a lot of good cards yeah i don't think we need to play a whole bunch i just think we might play you know i, I, a, I wish there was just some two. indicator that an npc has a card that you do not like like uh, just a simple little little pip over over the NPC's head to let you know hey that would be pretty amazing actually a little, a little tiny icon that you know that as, as it is now it's like there's no real reason to like ping every single person because you have to like play a game with that person to even know if there's cards that you don't have. This nobleman will play. Oh, this nobleman better have some fucking cards. Gross. Very gross. 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 That Tonberry. Just such bad arrows. Arrows, yeah. Let's see, that one's good. Uh, we, don't we have some X's? Yeah, this, there's an this X. Guy, yeah. And then we also have oh, another X somewhere. Yeah, this one, but it oh, doesn't yeah, have any. Oh yeah, but it's a zero power. So yeah, so we were I using. I mean, that's still fine because if the card it's going up against also has a zero, it doesn't matter even if it's magical or physical. So at least it becomes an even fight. Uh, uh, I mean, well, we got, you could put your, uh, we got really easy. on the bottom. We got really top easy. Left. You can just put, like, or in the middle. Wow! A two power physical just be, be, be a, a four. Four defense. See, yep. this is. This is why we do. <laughs> this is why we do that <laughs> scenario where we're like, uh huh. Right, so okay. If you put, yeah, that this guy there, right here will against, attack magic. One against that zero. Yeah. And easily beats it. Take it. Oof. Okay, so you can't fight the worm on the bottom. And all of our cards have a zero in their defense. Yeah. So it's going to be one versus a zero. Well, it'll be which card it is. It'll be one v. It'll be one v one. If if we try to fight the X, it'll be a one v one. How so? Well, so he has zero physical defense. So yeah. both of these guys both have one physical attack. 
that we'll attack him physically against zero defense, but he'll attack us magically against our zero defense. So. Um, I, so, I don't think that's the way it works. I think the way it works is that the attacking card uses its attack power. Yeah. The defending card uses its defense power. So the attack power, the one doesn't matter. It doesn't come into play if you attack it. Oh, okay. Only its defense that's value. Uh, well, then it'll be a... It'll be a one to zero anyways yeah 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 that's true and if you win you take the worm and that worm all automatically gets taken there we so. go. oh my oh, god it. stop losing all right Ugh. so you can put the worm yes yes right no stop <laughs> okay and I hate going first. Dear Lord. I hate it. It sucks because you'd have a perfect otherwise. Or yeah. have a chance at a perfect. Uh, this fucking worm, though. Yeah, that's actually a pretty good worm. It might be better than our also, worm. Also, this other thing, though. Uh, it's got good arrows. I like this worm. Yeah, the worm's good. God, I hate going first. I didn't even realize that we had gone first until I realized he had to play the last card, and I'm like, oh. Yeah. Hey, how's it going, Frail? Hey. Yeah, so this this is just a stronger attacking card. Yeah. Let's take it. Yeah, and it's got, I think it had better arrows. It's only missing the top left corner. Well, better is, you know, questionable. Like, Well, I, I, I say better is because I think it's always going to be preferable that a card has the fight than not. Not because it automatically loses if something points at it. It's because that's how card level up is combating. So sure. it has a better chance of bumping up. Interrupting their date to play cards. <laughs> how, uh, how awkward! How, that'd be—I don't know. That 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 just—that's great. Be like, yo, play some cards also, with how me. Hey, Sean, what's up? How's it going? Dewey. What you been up to? Saw you playing some Final Fantasy XIV. You liking it? No, he hates that game. He plays eleven now. Only. Only eleven. Only eleven now. Also, we go first, first again, so impossible to perfect. Uh, we can put our good worm in the top left so that it has the fight. I guess we could put the... Could do something like that. Okay. I mean, he could have easily fought that on the top left or top right, or taken it. What? It has no arrows. No arrows. It has no arrows. How can a card have <laughs> yeah, no arrows? You don't arrows? appreciate the shade. Ah, uh, you know. <laughs> oh, yeah, it is what it what's is. What's the purpose? I don't know. What that, is the purpose that of having really, a card with no arrows? That's really strange to me. All right, so if you put that word or any of those two cards right there, you just take all three. Uh oh. Damn it. Damn it. Yeah, we can't All really right. do anything about that yep, either. Yeah, you're gonna have to slam it right there and hope for the best. Okay. And this lady had some shit cards. No arrows! Oh. And we can take it now. No, we can't. It's it's red. So we couldn't even take the shitty card. Oh, no, we can't. Keep it as a memento of the shittiest card in the game. That's a really crap card, honestly. Like... It'd be, it could have, like, F-A-F-F, -F -F, and with no arrows, it's still worthless. Yeah, it's, it just doesn't matter. Play the thug, and then we'll probably move on with our lives. I wonder if that card exists. Uh, Tetra Master, F-A-F-F. -F -F. Doing that. I don't know if there's a way to, like, take back cards. Doesn't seem like that exists. 
Uh, what were you looking up? I was gonna see if a FAFF card actually existed. If mm -hmm. someone played this game long enough to get a card to upgrade to the literal maximum. Mm. My goodness, that would be... That'd be it something else. Lose. It could still lose. Could. It uh -oh. definitely could. You can down and ride it. Easy. Easy win. Uh-oh, that's bad. Oh, that's I get what the... Right, that is a uh, wait. What is that? What is that character on the physical defense on that cactar? Is that a B, B? or is that an eight? The B. What? Well, uh, no, it might That's be an eight. Either way, that I have no, that is the largest number we've seen. Yeah. Uh, no, we... no, we have larger on Alexandria. If if that not if that's a B. Well, okay, no, you're right. Not a bit. Not a bit. is massive. Woo. Uh, immediate take. Oh, wow. That was close, my dude. Perfect. Hey, There's perfect. Cards. Now we're going to wow. delete them all. And two Mandragoras. Nice. Very nice. All right, that was fun. Oh. <sighs> Well done, sir. You carded good. Carded good. All right, we're done here. We're not doing the. Oh no, we I like did. how that one of the 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 like the winning move was like two points away from losing. All right, onwards it's... to the. It's funny because I think I've noticed the the numbers sh kind of show you because it shows like two like a number for both cards, right? Mm -hmm. But I think that's the first number, and then when it starts subtracting, that's the second value. So one number might be higher than another one, but once they start subtracting, you notice that it might yeah like flip absolutely. Hoctor Dot. What? What the what? It's a blood moon. Blood moon! Welcome to my humble abode. It's a bode? Uh, it's. Excuse me. It's a bode? Wow, I hate that. I hate everything about that. I need to upgrade your abode reader. Don't mind if I do. Hey. Now we need to go. You gotta go save blank. Yeah, we're gonna go save blank. We're gonna go release the evil forest. Blank. No, we're gonna save blank. It's up here. Uh, looks like a globe. A busted-ass globe. Hmm. Interesting. I can't believe Final Fantasy would push that... That... That spherical bullshit. Everybody knows the world's flat. Oh, fuck off with you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you saw us struggling trying to even find out what... That, what they think we think. Like... Is it Spear Theory? I have no fucking idea. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Jay, relax. The stream just like, started. Well, I mean, think about it. Who do you think tried to destroy the globe? Flat Earther. This globe? Yeah, of course. They, they, they tried to destroy it in, in this game. No, no, I'm saying the Flat Earthers that exist within the the world of Final Fantasy IX. Mm, Cuz of of course there are flat earthers in Final Fantasy IX. Why would there be? That hurts. Stop stop putting your reality in my in my fantasy. 
probably people out there that are irradiating themselves. Oh my to god, avoid 5G. that drove me crazy <laughs> when you sent uh, that. Contacts. I found an article today where uh, some items had to be uh, removed from online stores because they were uh, like necklaces and bracelets and pendants that were supposed to protect you from 5G. Found out they were irradiated. They were using radiation to try to bypass or protect themselves from a wireless network that does them no harm. Right. For these! For these, and even charge the battery. It's almost like people are lying to gullible people. Well, no, no, it's not just that, right? But they're doing harm. Oh. Like... It's not, they're not just trying to scam people, they're trying to no, scam people. No, 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 I, I, I was talking about, like, the, the, the people causing people to believe stupid nonsense, oh. right? It's, it's, if we lived in a world where there wasn't, where, where it wasn't just rife with misinformation, then yeah. this wouldn't be a thing, right? But people are peddling bullshit to other people. Like, where did the concept of 5G causing issues even come from some fuck nut somewhere of... said something on a radio show or a tv show or a blog or something and then other people caught it and started pushing it and it's fucking insanity it's absolute insanity yeah because people of dignity have to study hard Little Garnet, by the way, looks really weird. Her hair is super strange. I like how perfectly square her face is. Right? Uh, oh, shit. Um, what? Apparently, the fear of, uh, of the conspiracy theory against wireless waves has been around since oh, the 1990s. That's Yeah, that's been around for a long-ass time, but what was the, the resurgence of the kick of 5G was something, right? What was that something? Why was that something? Coronavirus 5G conspiracy theory comes in several different strains of varying degrees in implausibility. <laughs> All implausible. Every single yeah. one. Completely and totally implausible. So... All right, apparently the original claim was that you could actually oh, catch coronavirus. We're inside. From, from uh, being in a 5G network too long. Which is like, that's insanity. What does that even mean? Being in a 5G network too long, right? Like being in range of 5G radio towers? Like, yeah, I don't know. Uh, if the that was true, was... then everyone in every major city on Earth at this point, because most of the major cities on Earth at this point have 5G, they'd all, everyone would have coronavirus. Yeah. So the, the reason this started was uh, whoever the original claimant was, that the article doesn't explain, said that there was no coincidence that the 5G technology was trialed in Wuhan where the pandemic began. What? Is that even true? Some claim that the coronavirus I crisis bet it's not. was deliberately created in, created in order to keep people at home while 5G engineers 
installed the technology everywhere. Wait, so so one of the claims about 5G spreading coronavirus is, is that they spread coronavirus so that they could put 5G everywhere so that it could then spread more coronavirus? What? Yeah. <laughs> that doesn't make yeah. any fucking sense. Yeah. <laughs> you nitwits. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. When you just... It's so funny when you just try to talk it out. You that's know? the it's... that's the insanity of it. Is is <laughs> is is it comes down to this is why uh, half the time I'm convinced that people get that get into this shit are are just seeking attention or or, or right, something right, like right. that, right? Here's some clarification. Real any quick. amount of critical thinking just makes you go, "Oh, that sounds ridiculous." So so um, just to clear things up to give this more a little bit more legitimacy uh the uh, a later claim was that 5g doesn't give you coronavirus it weakens people's immune systems immune system. making it easier to get coronavirus okay just hypothetically what would be the point right hypothetically if that were because true it pushes the liberals agenda dude don't you know that? No, 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 no. We're gonna we're gonna try to follow this with logic, right? Like, <laughs> if hypothetically that were true, right? That 5G weakened your immune system and made you more susceptible to illnesses, not just specifically the coronavirus, but just illness in general, right? Because that's what a weakened immune system does, right? What would be the purpose? of achieving that goal and who would desire such a thing right like so it would mean more people would die to illness okay who wants more people to die to illness or is this is this big pharma's scheme do they need more people sick so that they can charge more people for me is that well, like i mean the, it says right here in the next paragraph uh, the conspiracy theorists insisted the threat of the virus had been exaggerated, echoing President Trump's own language. Some of his supporters considered this a part of an elaborate hoax intended to harm his chances of re-election. That was the purpose. Okay. So, if it's an elaborate hoax intended to harm his chances at re-election, one of two things. One, if it's an elaborate hoax then it it's not true meaning 5g doesn't cause coronavirus so they literally just said it right there right <laughs> or two it, they didn't mean it was an elaborate hoax they meant it was an elaborate plot right to to harm his chances if so mission accomplished and if that was the case then after he didn't get reelected wouldn't they just be like Oh, well, he didn't get reelected. Time to turn off the coronavirus machines. Yeah, yeah well, I mean, a lot of uh, a lot of politicians, uh, right leaning politicians mentioned that uh, watch it after uh, Biden takes office. Uh, coronavirus is just going to go away. Nope. Nope. We just I think we just recently hit 80,000 deaths. 800,000. 800,000. 800,000 dollars. It's nearly a million people in the United States of America dead because of this. And nobody, and, and people, and like people don't even give it the the reverence or the views of, you know, like 9 11, where that was just the. I mean, I don't want to say just like 2000 or under 2000, but still, like. People do not have the ability to translate or comprehend large death tolls, right? One person is a... a, a Sorry, 3,000. A Sorry. horrible event, right? Like, five is a tragedy. But as soon as you start getting to the point to where it's like 20, right? School shooting numbers, people start to like, to start they stop being able to parse that information. You start getting into like the hundreds and then the thousands and fucking near the near to a million. People can't fathom that type of, of death. 
partially because we are biologically programmed, like psychologically programmed, to try to avoid that type of stuff. Because if you try to be empathetic about that type of stuff, it it'll fuck you up. You're just going to right? collapse like, on yourself. So so it's built into us to not um, be able to really compute that. Yeah, I think that might actually be to our detriment, though. Like, take school shootings, for example. Like, because Absolutely. people can find a way to disassociate from the, that kind of shit. That's why we have politicians that are more worried about getting masks out of schools than guns. That's just manipulation. Like, all of that is just complete and utter ma manipulation um, of uh, uh, hate and ignorance and stupidity. Um, I, it is mind-boggling how divided we are yeah. as a people by by our government it's it's ridiculous it's absolutely hi, YouTube. ridiculous how are hi, you yeah, enjoying hi, YouTube. the video welcome to final fantasy 9 make where sure we, you hit uh, that like button i warned i like warned this. everyone at the beginning of this video that we were gonna <laughs> we were gonna get real fucking talky i knew i was in that mood oh john let's go save blank from the forest where he got petrified and none of this shit is actually happening right there is no uh this is why we play video games to escape from the stupidity of the real world my god oh man i, I think i think what got me talking about it was because i so yesterday i went and saw the new spider-man movie and it was uh really good um but we mean after the movie rachel and i went to go get some sushi and uh for those who aren't aware I'm, i don't think there's anybody that's gonna do that i'm from the south and there is just an absolute overwhelming number of country bumpkin hicks that are so massively uneducated and so chock full of conspiracy theories that don't make your head spin. Mm -hmm. And me and Rachel are sitting there trying to eat, and I've got Billy Bob behind me going like, you know if you had cancer, uh, the vaccine will make the cancer come back, right? And I'm like... People are starting to wake up. I hate... That's just... that's that It really... it It's really hard, Jeremy. The Let only way... You. Okay, here here's legitimately... The only way that that conversation should happen... Should happen is... Is you hear someone at a table... And I'm not, I'm not going to do a voice. I'm just going to talk, right? You hear someone at the table next to you go... Uh, you know, I read an article that said uh, there might be a link between um, individuals with cancer and uh, um, the cancer, you know, coming back after they're 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 seeing a trend of people who are vaccinated. Um, what is not go going into remission is the good thing, right? Yeah, the opposite. Yeah. Right? No. Uh, what is it when when cancer comes back? It's called something. Yeah, it has a it has a name. But anyways, right? So so that's how that conversation goes. And then the other person goes, "Oh, that sounds really strange." They're researching it, and then the other person says, "Yeah, they're doing a couple studies on it." Interesting it's, it's to just see called what reference. happens, right? Like, and and that's what that conversation should be. Not like, "Oh yeah, blah blah,", blah you know. Like it's. It's it's okay well, to the, question the things. Thing is, it's okay it's to that... be skept skeptical. It's okay to to think, hmm, that sounds strange or suspicious. Maybe there's a leak here. Maybe there's causality here, right? But then actually research it and and ask the question. I don't. It fucking. I don't. I'm gonna. I'm gonna have a mental break tonight. Does not imply causation. No. It doesn't mean causation. It can imply yeah. causation. Well, all right. But here's the thing, right? There is an abundance of information mm -hmm. explaining exactly how vaccines are made. Absolutely. And it's, it's, I have, and I've gone through it. I was just curious. Mm -hmm. And it's actually kind of cool. But the thing is, if you knew how they were made, you would know. You would be certain. You would know that there is no way a vaccine can cause cancer. The same way a vaccine cannot cause autism. The same way 
that a vaccine can't cause anything like that other than you don't get the sickness from the thing that you got the vaccine from. You can get temporarily sick as your antibodies adjust to the 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 spike protein from the virus not the actual virus by the way the spike protein from it right sure and so here's the thing right these ideas that people have right like oh maybe this is dangerous if we put too many vaccines in our body maybe this is dangerous if maybe this chemical in this vaccine is a dangerous thing right like these ideas are legitimate ideas but they are legitimate ideas that scientific minds far far brighter than ours already have and they already test and they already come to conclusions on they do tests on all of these vaccines there, there have been studies and tests on vaccines for decades since vaccines were created a long, long time ago, right? Like, no, like they they've been asking these questions and looking for answers and coming up with answers from the very beginning. None of this is new information, and that's why it's so incredibly frustrating, right? Is Is for people to go... I believe X, Y, Z about this thing. Nope. That does, that's not true. Well, what do you mean that's not true? How do you know it's not true? Because we thought we were worried too and we tested it. But it, that's not true, right? So so that's that's the thing that's so frustrating is, is, is like... It's not that people's concern isn't necessarily valid, right? Like people have a right to be worried and afraid of of things that they don't understand but then it's the ignoring the information that gives them the proper answer that's the problem that's the willful ignorance part of it that makes me hate people progress today maybe we're making a little bit of progress here, though. <laughs> By the way, um, it's actually funny because so we're in Gargan Roo now, and Gargan Roo is apparently one of the best grinding places in the whole game. Oh, we got this guy's card, huh? We got this guy's card. Oh yeah, die creature. Uh oh, what's my attack like? Ah! Man. Oh, it's back to melee again. All right. Uh, yeah, do you don't have a racket on right now. How much HP we're looking at? I don't know. I don't know what the fuck this thing is. Two hits. That's how much HP. That's a lot of experience. Actually. So, so, um, as I was saying, this place is supposedly one of the best uh, places in the game to grind, and really? it is not, it is not for, with, or without reason, um, to okay. grind here. Apparently, Marcus's stats, um, not his levels, but his stats transfer over to another character cuz Marcus is not an eternal character. Wait, right? What? Um apparently there's some weird glitch in the game in the base game, right? Where Marcus's stats transfer over to another character. I think Amarant, but I'm not sure. Um what, what do you mean transfer? Like if we grind Marcus up the So like, yeah, level... if you grind the shit out of Marcus, then then Armorant will come in at 20? No, no, not levels. Stats. Armorant's... Uh, and again, I don't know that it's Armorant, but I think it's Armorant. Um, it's either Armorant or Iko. I'm pretty sure it's Armorant. But apparently, um, the, there's some weird glitch where if you grind the shit out of Marcus... It's Iko. It's Iko? Okay. 
The Marcus Ico bu stat bug is a bug which occurs when leveling Marcus in Final Fantasy IX, causing some of Marcus's stat growths to be added to Ico's without affecting her level, enabling her to obtain much higher stats. There you go. So in theory, there are certain um, there's certain suggestions that say kill off Ruby and Rusty and give Marcus the blood sword and just grind the shit out of Marcus. So you can have a uh, Ico super soldier. So basically, <laughs> I don't think we're gonna do that, but it is a funny scenario. So. Yeah, I mean, if he's got a blood sword, he's not going down. Yep. Like. Focus results of Cena, Blank, and Marcus being temporary characters whose templates are later used for Quina, Armorant, and Ico, respectively. Oh, okay, so we could, if we had a place to grind with Blank, then Armorant stats would work, and Senna would boost Quina, but since we already have Quina in our party, I don't think it's going to work anymore. Yeah, and there's not really a great place to, to grind to either of them. Yeah. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. I'll actually assist in this one. Hey, ya! Because I don't want these guys to kick our ass. Oh, that's enough. Nice. Well, done. Uh, doubtful. Oh. Yeah. Uh, what's our max HP? When should I be healing? I don't know. Jesus. I don't either. Rusty's max HP is way higher than yeah, his Marcus. Like 900. Yeah, um, everyone else is at like four or five hundred. He's already so. level sixteen, has ten percent out add status. Damn. Respectively, in each case. For the case of Quinn and Armorant, they will become whatever level Cinna and Blank left the party. And if it's higher than the party average. Since Quina's and Armorant stats grow when leveling up Founder. themselves, it's not beneficial to level grind either Senna or Blank. Okay. Ico will not receive Marcus's level, but inherit his stat group. Ico's level will be determined by the level of the current party members of Sedane, Dagger, Vivi, and Quina. So the average of their levels. Yeah, getting Marcus to level 99, uh, Ico will potentially gain over 40 stat points. Wow. Only? Uh, I think they mean as, like, her base stats. Yeah. And then her levels scale off of that. Yeah, still, I mean, it, it only, like, all the way up to 99 only gives, like, plus 40 stats across the board. Yeah. I mean, that's, uh, interesting. She is the only character able to max either strength or magic. Because of this glitch? Yep. Interesting. She can also have the highest HP and MP in the game. A Gargant. That seems, I don't know if that seems like... If you're going to take the time to grind Marcus up to 99, you're not, like, you could just grind the characters, like, your party up to, like, I don't know, like, 40? Not, not, well, maybe. It's way faster to grind one person up a ways than it is three people up, though. Right. Like, I'm saying, like, this is, this is a, a, a win more situation where it's, like, don't need if you if you spent the time to do that yeah if you want to spend the time just playing the game 
this is, and I do not, when I say this, I do not mean this in an insulting way. Everyone, everyone enjoys playing games in a, in their own different ways. Some people like doing specific things. Some people like just playing games for the story. Some people like playing games for the gameplay. Some people like playing games to maximize every single portion of the game that they can. So when they find a thing like this, they feel compelled to do it because it's going to give them the strongest character and or because they can say i ground marcus to level 99 and got super ico you know like yeah, I got super ico. So. Uh, and that's fine right it's just can, not my bag yeah you're right though you can apparently put the, if you put the controller on turbo in there you could just do that forever and get them you can walk away put it on hit turbo walk away come back the next day and you're pretty much good Uh, the bug was fixed in the PC version, 1.1.3. That's a great reason for us to be playing the not PC version. There well, we we're not going to take advantage of it, so what's the point? Well, look, you know. Prevent some silence. Um... <laughs> The glitch is alluded to in Final Fantasy's Record Keeper. Really? Like, the game itself references the glitch. As the player completes Record Spheres for Marcus, they will earn motes bearing Ico's likeness, which can be used to activate a record length sphere in Ico's Record Sphere, affording her additional stat boosts. Interesting. <laughs> uh. <laughs> Oh, that's funny. I mean, there's a chance that's not a direct reference, but I don't know. Sure. Uses own MP to raise attack power. Interesting. Well, we can't do that right now, so. Boy. Mm. For desert boots, we only have one desert boot, right? No. the one power belt. Hey. I mean, whatever. Yeah, remember we we were given the power belt from uh, the thief yeah. event. So we're, we, this we do is not about have to be... an option to buy or craft them. I think I'm going to actually swap that off of Steiner then. Go with the gold choker. the status on his uh, weapon. Oh. I don't know what this is. Is a find out about that glitch it was in my oh. walkthrough oh cool fixed in the pc version the 
that is a disturbing creature used as a uh, gondola, and I don't like it. It's an ant. I like, I like it. it. It's kind of like it's kind of like proto Hollow Knight, man. Oh, the the yeah. stag beetle Absolutely. express. Yeah, but the stag beetle was like, you know, a, 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 a creature capable of speech and comprehension and intelligent. That is a beast of burden. And? What's your point? I don't know. I'm just saying the stag beetle was cooler. I, I, I do not disagree. I love his floppy arms when he ran. Hollow Knight was really good. I Hollow really Knight is Hollow very, Knight. very good. Mm -hmm. Be safe, princess! All right, we have a goal here. As per normal, every every new boss, we got to steal something. Right. Um, but I think we have a new trick here. Um, well, we already have a new uh, trick because we could use the tent. But instead of using a tent, I think Ruby actually has darkness now, and we can put that on the boss. I think well, I can just blind sword him to death or blood sword him to death pretty easily. Well, we don't want to kill the thing before we steal the thing. Well, as per you, normal. You're saying we. Look, it gets you a new fork for Queena. Uh, fine. It's a, what are you talking about? It's just going to be a fork we get in the next town afterwards. That's possible. Probable. Like, have you noticed Probable, all even. these like, super rare things we're trying to steal? We're like, oh, hey, Jay, remember that one thing that, that took is us, not... like, when he turns to steal? Here it is in the shop! It's, it's most often, yes, we typically get it a little bit later. It gives us a little bit of a head start. And, oh, and it really, means we don't always have to spend the money on it. Learning something on previous weapons before we can, because the system's dumb. That's not always true. It's, but it, it can It is situations that arise. You sure? Would you? Oh my god! You, you're really looking the gift horse in the mouth right now. Yeah. <laughs> like <laughs> real bad. Blind that motherfucker! I don't know how you're blinding it. It doesn't look like it has eyes. Oh, I was Fine. gonna say. I would just need berserk. All right, it landed. All right, we're going for a mithril fork. Don't strain. Don't. Don't strain. Anything else? Do I have any other like Protect. silence? Sure. Let's try that. It can. Okay. Uh, blind and slow is what it is. I don't have slow. Well, that that's why I didn't say slow it. <laughs> Stop touching stuff, sir. Mm -hmm. Man, look how slow you are. Jeez. That's slow. Yes. Yeah, that blind's working. Yep. That steel's not. What are you looking at? Yeah, you gotta remember, uh... Marcus doesn't have bandits. That's true. So we're stealing at regular rates. Regular. Well, fortunately, I mean, none of this stuff is rare. It's just an uncommon, so. And what was my point just a minute ago? Mithril Fork. Now you can kill it. Go ahead. That was so excruciating. It took such a long it time. It wasn't this time. Big baby. Oh, we got all of its stuff. I didn't realize yeah. we got the bone wrist already. Oh, oh shit. Hey, I might actually have to heal. You might. Oh, never mind. It's Steiner. Yep, never mind. You can just attack. Let's, uh... Let's... This work with like my sword abilities. I don't know. Reduces enemies' defense. Let's. I think it does damage too. Let's see if it absorbs. Let's see. Oh, 
Oh, it, it literally just lowers the enemy's defense and a miss. Oh. Uh, I'm bored. I want to cast the uh, cure. Gotta tell you, man. Uh, been playing a lot of Valkyrie Profile 2. Um, I absolutely hate. Let me let me. Let me so when you <laughs> fill up the gauge and you can do your you know special attacks like Nibble and Glassy, right? Sure. Like. Um, oh, I didn't mean to do that again. I forgot it's on memory. Shit. When you when you do your special attacks, they allow you, if you haven't set any options, to skip the animation, right? Yeah. But it's it doesn't skip the animation. It cuts out, like, a large chunk of the middle. You still see a little bit of the beginning. You still see, like, the final hit. Yeah. Even with that, shit takes forever. Even skipping what you can. If you if you have your party set up well enough where you can get all four characters special off, yeah. it takes forever. And I hate it. It's I, uh... like I have a turbo key and I'll like attack, attack, attack. Oh, I got my uh my what is it they called? The like soul crush or whatever. Hit turbo, start mashing the, the buttons and it just like clearly they like their animations. By the way, Nibel and Velesti does not look nearly as cool as it did in VP1. I think very little looks as cool as it did yeah, in yeah, VP1, yeah, yeah. in fairness. I, I, I know I have rose-tinted glasses for VP1, but I try to be um, I try to be critical of my opinion between it compared to VP1 and VP2. And VP2, I just there there are just certain things about the game that make me. There are parts of VP2 that are very clearly good progressions from what VP1 was. I I get where they were trying to have a more focused, um, cons like storyline on a singular point, um, and I think they did good did good work with that. Um, and the battle system is fun, right? Uh, but there are just glaring flaws in it compared to VP1 for me. And you know what the flaws are? So huh? you you can learn uh, passive skills. Like there's aggress there's like attacks, defense, uh, counter. Like there's a bunch of different categories. And the way you learn them is that every piece of gear in the game has a glyph on it. A glyph. It's like a healing glyph or an attack glyph, you know, a magic glyph, right? And your character's got like this three by three grid, which is kind of in a diamond shape, but you know, just rotate it a few degrees. Um, and every piece of gear also has a color associated with it. There's a color and a glyph. And when colors touch each other, the, the glyphs are then connected if they're the same color. And certain glyphs touching each other characters will then start learning a skill mm -hmm. so it's like Final Fantasy 9 where you have to have certain equipment equipment e equipped but it's, it's not worse. just one piece of gear yeah it's multiple pieces of gear and also it has to be in like a, a certain formation in that three by three grid not a fan it's of it at, at all not Good. Not a fan of it at all. Whereas the <laughs> the skill system in VP1, it was very simple. You just get points when you level up, and you spend those points on a vast array of, of skills, but you can learn more skills throughout the game, right? So it's not it's not at the very beginning you have 50,000 things. No, you go through the game and you unlock more and more and more stuff to put more and more and more points into to customize your, your party. Um, it's very simple. But it's very good, and it feels good. It feels good to get the points. I think the, I think the big thing. So like I saving I, up for something. Right? It's like it, you know. I I don't like so so VP two system the way they do it. I do not like. However, again to be fair, right? I do actually like that VP 2s system has some unique and interesting skills in it. Whereas compared to VP1, 
most of their skills are just stat boosts. There yeah, are yeah. very few skills in VP1 that are anything other than just boosting your stats. There are a couple, right, like guts or counters or yeah. things like the, the familiar attacks or stuff like that, but they are few and far between. The vast majority of them are just stat boosts, and that's kind of lame, right? So, again, they're there are good things and there are bad things, but that system in BB2 is just such a pain in the ass. It was so fun discovering that on my own because I, I played BB2 like back in the day, right? Yeah. Didn't like it, didn't finish it. So I retained no information on it. So going back into it and slowly figuring out how it works, I'm like, are you fucking kidding me? Is this really how this works? <laughs> And I, I will say, yeah, it is cool in VP2 because you get some really interesting, like, uh, like skills, like that that aren't VP1, like uh, survive a mortal blow with one HP, or whenever you take damage, you have a chance of just healing fifty percent of that damage back. You know, little 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 cool quality. Now your stat raising stuff is still there, like in combat you can raise your attack stat. Or Let your me magic be very clear, stat. right? Like, most yeah. of what I said about the, the issue with, like, VP1 skills, most of that is still in VP2. There are just a few more in VP2, I feel, that are more skill-like than just stat-like, you know? I it's not a not big ago, increase. Really good, it, where it takes your magic stat and adds it to your physical attack stat, and that makes it so that, that character would also want to learn the skill that boosts their magic stat by 50% when they're in combat. Yeah. And I, I'm like, yeah, basically at the end of the day, all that is is just stat building, just like you were talking about. But it's but an it still interesting, interesting manner of stat building. Yeah. Uh, uh, agreed. Absolutely. 100%. It's a way to pay. It's interesting because it makes your physical characters care about what would normally be a dump stat. Not like you put points into it. Clara sound yummy. Oh my goodness. But that said, the story is still interesting. Combat's yeah. still fun. I don't know how I feel about all right, so in VP1. You're just in combat, enemies on one side, allies on the other, and you just smack each other, right? In VB2, there's this big emphasis on movement, spacing, uh, enemy effects on the ground where you avoid them, like, you know, kind of like a MMO or whatever. Yeah. And a part of me likes it at times, and then a, then at other times I don't. It's, it's weird. It's like, yeah, okay, I like, like, dashing around, like, through active like enemy lines and like getting behind them or if like it's a big enemy I can actually just like kite circles around them and they can't actually face me and that feels really good yeah but other times I'm just like bro can I just fucking attack no that, that's not an option Hey, chain play. Going out out there. It's still a good game. It's not. It's not VP one, but it's a good game. Yeah. Uh, I, I I think my biggest problem with that game is how uh quickly they'll take and how frequently they'll take party members out of your party, and they'll be gone forever. Some. Hey. Come back, sure. The party system period is one of my big complaints about VP2. Period. Like mm -hmm. um, that scenario, losing party members is super frustrating. Um, especially like since VP1, the only reason why you lose them is because you send you them. You decide to yourself. send them away. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um. But in VB2, they just you just lose people throughout the story, and it's super frustrating. Some you get back, some you don't. Um, but to top it off, the ones that you're losing are the ones with 
interesting stories and backgrounds, and they're these they're story the ones characters that are participating actively right? in the story. And and all your others, and this is my big fucking deal. All your others are fucking generic bums. So here's the cool problem. With that. Cool so in, gameplay, in one, right? All the Iron Harry are emplaced in specific places where yep. you meet them and you learn about them and you help them, right? Go through stories. None of that with exists them. in VP2. In VP2, oh. you walk up to like where an Iron Harry art is and you like, yes, I want to pull the spirit, I want to pull the Iron Harry art out, right? There's like multiple Iron Harry art that come from that one place. There's like a some have like a 50-50, some's like a 40-60, but yeah, it's, it's it's random which one you're going to so get. You, so it's impossible to even have like a storyline because you, you know, like I said in the first one they're they're mainly well here's the thing that's not true for... that's not true you absolutely could have st not robust stories right it wouldn't be it wouldn't be like VP one where it's an entire like episode or anything like that but you could do a little kind of like short mini thing where when you touch the soul right you're kind of like drawn into that soul and you experience their history for a brief moment and you like relive their last moments just like in VP1, right? You could have a little 30 minute to an hour like side quest where you experience the thing. And that's all really VP1 was, right? Like yeah, once absolutely. you got the character, you that didn't get cool. anything that after them. Awesome. But they could have done exactly that for each of the generic Ein Harriar and it didn't it wouldn't matter where you got them because Oh, you walk up to the sword in the first dungeon. You have a chance between these three randoms. You, you all three of them or... could be, could be, a, you know, they all died here. That's fine. You know, it's just uh, whose sword did you get this time, right? Yeah, and and so and just to like to put in perspective, in Valkyrie Profile One, like that happened. You find an Iron Harry R, you're getting lore, right? That's just how it is. In Valkyrie Profile 2, you get an Iron Harry R, you recruit it, you don't even have to look at the stats. You can completely ignore the fact that you even picked it up. If you go in, you can find a page in the character's stat sheet about their lore that you could optionally read, but otherwise there's some random schmuck that you can completely ignore. And so, and that's the funny thing, right? So, that being the case, I wasn't drawn to using Ein Harriar when I'm playing the game. I want to use the the people that are that in have the, a story, absolutely. Only to find out in chapter, I'm in chapter five. I have lost like five storyline characters, a few of which I had invested heavily. And here's the thing, right? The game knows this is bullshit. So whenever characters leave, they usually leave, uh, give you an item that gives you a massive amount of experience. So you can try to pick a different uh, character, give that experience to you, try to get them up to where your party is, so you're not fucked, right? Yeah. And that is dumb. That that's is the a, that is that a, is terrible design. And that's the only reason those experience items really work or or exist in the game. By the way, is is for that purpose, mm -hmm. right? Because it's, it's it's not a like a percentage or a scaling amount. It's a flat amount. So like you give this item to like a level one character or you give them like two or three and they're up to level like 20 something. But if you give that character like three more, they only get a few levels out of it because it's because of the way the scaling works, right? So it's only really used to get people up to like... Now in fairness, Valkyrie Profile 1 also had a system much like that. Um, but Valkyrie Profile 1 system scaled a bit, and you could actually, um, I mean, you did, if you, if you had a party that you stuck with from the very beginning of the game, um, you could just feed all of that experience into them, and it's, it, like you were saying, right, you wouldn't get, uh, you wouldn't get crazy not, levels out of it, but you would get higher levels out of it if you just yeah, consistently like, you fed would, it to them. I think, I don't, I don't, I think at the very least you're going to get a level from using one, period. Sure. So it's, I mean, so like, that is somewhat alleviates the, the issue, but it just still feels like complete ass to have it, like, so this, after the fourth character got ripped out of my hands, I said, 
fuck it. I don't care about the fucking story. I don't care who you get. I don't care when it happens. Fucking spoil me. Who leaves? And I found the guy, I found like this post online that explained who leaves, yep. who comes back, if they do it all, and when they do. Yep. Because I, I'm done. I don't, I don't want to fucking deal with this no more. It's terrible. I feel you. Yeah. I, I agree 100%. That whole shtick is really frustrating. Well, uh, this this last this, the the last the, the last time I lost a party member was in chapter five, out of eight chapters of the game. By the way, they they do it through the whole fucking game. Um, it's kind of like I the opposite of what that, you were that, saying. That, you teased me about with Dark Deity, right? Like the whole like, oh, you're gonna get a character right at the end. Oh, you're gonna lose characters all the way up to the end. <laughs> yeah, yeah, uh, literally. I like one of the spoilers was, and I, I if you care, I, I think I already told you. Yeah, the right. main character leaves right before the final but boss. She, but she's replaced with basically an identical. She's stack basically character. replaced with a better version of her, I guess. But it's inside the point. Yeah, like, I, I agree. It's a, it's a it's a parody of itself. Um, well, let's go ahead and end this uh, episode here. Uh, cause we, uh, we're done, we're over an hour and we're done with, uh, some main events. So we're, when we come back, we're gonna be moving forward on side questing again. Cause that's what we do, you know? So <laughs> thanks for watching. This was a bit of a weird episode. We'll see you back for more Final Fantasy IX next time. Thanks everybody. Bye. Hey everybody. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, consider leaving a like, commenting, or subscribing. It really helps me out. If you'd like to see me live, head over to my Twitch at twitch.tv forward slash the distant horizon.